Hi everyone, welcome to Medsket. The toxin of the day is snake venom. For ease, we have named the scene as the Hev Forest as represented by the board in the right corner of the scene. So just remember HEV Forest. I'll decode it later. So let's talk about the category of snake venom. So it belongs to the category of animal poisons. So snakes are basically divided into two types. One are the poisonous snakes and the second one are the non-poisonous snakes. So on the right side of the scene, you can see two snakes. One is brown colored and one is green colored just hanging to the tree. So how can we differentiate between the two snakes? So you can see the brown snake has large scale on its belly and it also has long teeth or fangs in case of snakes. So long canalized fangs and also you can see the tail is a bit smaller at the end. So the belly scales are larger and cover the entire breadth of the belly of poisonous snakes and they have long fangs and their tail is a bit compressed. Also you can see a black shadow just beneath the brown snake. It is just representing the nocturnal nature of poisonous snakes. So the nocturnal nature just represents that these snakes like to hunt at night. One other important feature is that two fang marks are seen at the side of the bite, like two dots are seen at the bite side. Let's talk about the non-poisonous snakes. The belly scales are not very visible, the fangs are short, and the tail is not much compressed. So you can see the green snake, we have not showed the scales so that you can remember, and the fangs are not very visible, they are very small tail is not compressed and one other important feature is that uh, that they are not nocturnal and u-shaped teeth impression is present at the bite mark or the bite site of these snakes so what is basically snake venom so snake venom is amber tinted fluid and that is secreted by the oral glands of the snake and is injected by the fangs of the snake so its composition is very important so the composition of snake venom is represented by a battle scene between our hero whose name is enzyme enforcer and our villain whose name is toxin tormentor so our enzyme enforcer is wearing a lasso or a dress that is made up of fibers that is representing the phenomena of fibrinolysis so fibrinolysis are present our superhero has a curved knife in his right hand that degrades the proteins of the villain that is the toxin tormentor. So that is representing the presence of proteolysis in snake venom. Also our hero has a magical wand in his left hand that clots the blood of the villain. This is indicating the presence of thromboplastins. So let's come to our villain that is the toxin tormentor. As you can see, green ominous fumes are coming from the villain that is representing the presence of neurotoxins in the snake venom. The hammer in the right hand of villain is representing that it is for breaking the RBCs of our hero. So hemolysins are present in the snake venom. Also, you can see some heart shaped fumes are present just beneath the hammer. So cardiotoxins are also present in snake venom and some glue like substance is present on the rock just beside the villain. So agglutinins are present in the snake venom as well. So I'll repeat the composition. So fibrinolysins, proteolysins, thromboplastins, hemolysins, cardiotoxins, neurotoxins and agglutinins are basically present in the snake venom. Among the constituents, neurotoxin and cholinesterase are predominantly present in elapidae category of snakes that we are going to talk about later and hemolysins and thromboplastins are basically present in viper venom or viperidae. So let's talk about sign and symptoms of snake bite. So as I told earlier that we have named the scene as HEV forest. So basically the poisonous snakes are divided into three categories, elapidae, viperidae and hydrophidae. So just remember from HEV forest, H stands for hydrophidae, E stands for elapidae and V stands for viperidae. So let's talk about our first category of poison snakes. So in the background, you can see a yellow and green snake that looks like a king cobra. Beside the snake, you can see ENT book Dhingra and a boy is sitting on the ground 
with the respirator so the e and t book is representing e elapidae and n neurotoxic so the first category that we are going to talk is elapidae so elapidae are basically neurotoxic and they lead to neurotoxic shock so the boy is holding his legs representing some sort of weakness and he is also having an oxygen cylinder so basically lethargy muscle weakness of the legs and paralysis of muscles of face throat and respiration so basically it leads to paralysis of muscles of respiration and muscles of legs so what are some common examples of elapidae so common cobra or king cobra common crate banded crate and coral snakes are included in elapidae so the cobras cause convulsions and muscular paralysis while the crate venom causes only muscular paralysis so the cobra venom is very dangerous and should be managed immediately and for remembrance we have shaped the snake as cobra so let's talk about our next category so in the middle of scene you can see a green rattlesnake so the story is very interesting the boy in the red broke the egg of the rattlesnake and in offense the snake attacked the boy so the green snake is representing the rattlesnake you may have seen the rattlesnakes in national geographic channel also on the shirt of the boy it is written vv so the category is vipridae and it is vesculotoxic so we have written double v vipridae is vesculotoxic the broken egg represents the mechanism of action that is the coagulation of tissues so it causes coagulation of tissues and the enzymatic breakdown of cell membranes also you can see the boy is coughing blood also a broken rbc is present on the ground and a cool breeze is present above his head so basically the rbc is representing the lysosomal degradation of red blood cells and other tissue cells are also killed as a result locally there is oozing of hemolytic blood from the bite side and cellulitis can also be present also you can see the blood is coming from the mouth it is representing the phenomena of hemoptysis and the cool breeze is representing the cold clammy skin also you can see on his left arm there is a blister or ichymosis is present so just remember that the viper bite can lead to coagulation of tissues it causes red blood cells degradation and also it causes hemolysis ichymosis hemoptysis vomiting can be present and you can see blood oozing from the bite surfaces so let's talk about our next category so the on the left side of scene you can see a muscular snake that is present in water so it represents hydrophidae so you can see the snake is a bit muscular in comparison to our previous two snakes so basically hydrophidae are myotoxic so the snake is muscular in this regard so just remember that the venom of hydrophidae basically affects the muscles on the left side of our hydrophidae you can see a boy that is sitting on a log and on his left side handcuffs are present and in front of the boy you can see a stake so basically the boy is sitting that is representing generalized muscular pain or stiffness we have added some yellow exclamation lines so you can remember that the boy is not sitting comfortably the handcuff can also be used to remember the phenomena of muscular pain and stiffness also you can see in front of the boy there is a stake that is representing the presence of myoglobin urea so due to the breakdown of muscles as we have talked that it is a myotoxic increased muscular breakdown leads to increased myoglobin and increased amount of myoglobin is excreted into the urine so just remember that the hydrophidae poisoning leads to generalized muscular pain stiffness and myoglobin urea also there is an important feature that the boy is sitting on a brown log so brown discoloration of urine is also seen if muscles of respiration are involved it can lead to respiratory failure as well so let's talk about the post mortem appearance of snake bite so in the background of the scene on the right side you can see a sherlock home character that is holding a magnifying glass 
just focus on the teeth of sherlock holmes they are just like a viper and some blood is also oozing on the ground so basically with the use of magnifying glass we can find one or more bite marks on the skin of the patients so our sherlock home is probably looking for the fang bites the fang bites can be 2.5 cm deeper in case of viper bites and 1 cm in case of elapidae so viper bites are a bit deeper so it can lead to significant flow of blood from the punctured site so we have showed the oozing of blood now just focus in the center of pond so you can see some sort of bubbles or froth is present in the center of pond so froth from mouth and nose can be seen from the patients to conclude we can see bite marks we can see blood and we can see froth from the mouth and nose so let's talk about the medical legal aspects of snake bite so majority of snake bites are unintentional homicidal or suicidal respectively you may have heard about the cleopatra story so that was suicidal in that case but normally it is unintentional or homicidal so just focus on the bird that is flying in the sky the same bird was present in our abris video that was representing cattle poisoning so why are snakes used for cattle poisoning so for getting the skin or hides of the animals the cobblers may occasionally poison cattle using an or technique so basically the venom is obtained from the cobra and it is injected into the animal's rectum with the help of bamboo stick just like sui or abris picratorius and the animal is killed in the respective way so you can just remember that it is mostly unintentional or for homicidal purposes and it can also be used in cattle poisoning as well so let's talk about the journal management and treatment of snake bite so on the left side of the scene you can see a tree the tree is having a surgical kit on the ground and above the tree you can see balloons with letter a there are three balloons in total and also you can see our barbie from cocaine video so whenever snake bites a person you have to reassure him so you have to allay his anxiety and fright because naturally a person would be thinking that i would die but you have to reassure the patient you have to counsel him you have to immobilize him so that the venom cannot uh, be spread to other parts of body by muscular action you have to clean the wound and apply tonic a as soon as possible applying the tonic a is very important because it would prevent the spread of venom from the bite side also if anti venom is available you can administer it or you can also go for incision and suction so we have placed the surgical kit just beside the tree so you can remember that tonic a is usually present in the surgical kit also incision and surgical equipments are present so just remember you have to counsel the patient you have to immobilize him you have to clean the wounds you have to apply the tonic a you have to uh, administer anti venin and you can also go for incision and suction so you can see our three balloons that are having letter a so let's talk about the treatment so the letter a are representing artificial respiration aspirin and antibiotic administration artificial respiration should be given if muscles of respiration are involved aspirin to prevent the coagulation and uh, hematological problems antibiotics to prevent the infections and uh, steroids can be used and transfusion of blood can be done also you can see uh, our barbie that is representing barbiturate administration as we have talked earlier that anti venin or anti venom can also be administered so let's conclude the treatment artificial respiration aspirin antibiotics transfusion of blood steroid and barbiturates can be given in addition to the journal myers that we have done earlier so it was all about snake poisoning it was a lengthy one but it is important as well if you have any questions you can drop in the comment section till then take care for detailed literature of toxins, refer our textbook, Excel Forensic Medicine and Toxicology, available at all major medical bookstores all over Pakistan.